Eddie Hearn well. Diego Pacheco, a superstar in the making after that sensational knockout against Marcelo Cocorez here in LA. Yeah, I think it was exactly what he needed. I mean, tough fight. You know, had him probably two rounds up before the stoppage, just starting to really dominate the fight, but probably respected Caceres a little bit too much, which is understandable. You know, he's a fringe world level guy. He was by far the toughest opponent of his career so far. But the maturity I liked, you know, the punch power we know is there. The shot selection's fantastic and the finishing is always fantastic from Diego Pacheco. So that was a big statement. Just 22 is a really nice crowd in here tonight. This is going to grow and grow. And as I said, I believe the future star at 168 pound division. Great matchmaking. We spoke in the week about experience. This was the perfect bridge and fight to that next level. Yeah, it was. And Caceres was up for it. He had a lot of um, notice leading into the fight. He wanted to win. He started to tire in the round before and I could see Diego really getting to him, hurting him. He took some good shots. But then the uppercut was devastating and, you know, couldn't find his feet to get up. And a, a big statement from Diego Pacheco. Talking about taking big shots, I think Diego took his own in round yeah. five. Just another element there to show he has a chin as well. Yeah, about three flush left hooks. He, he got hit too much tonight, really. But you're going to as you go through the levels. And that's what I think he needed. You know, got busted up a little bit with head butts, split lip, cut under the eye. And you need to go through those times where things aren't always going your way all the time in fights. And that's what happened with Diego. He adjusted. You know, I think he was a little bit passive at times in the early part of the fight. Once he started taking the middle of the ring and backing Caceres up, sometimes two attacks rather than one, you know, he started to wear him down. And I think probably in the back of his mind, the 12 round distance as well. You know, never been 12 rounds and the fight looked like it was going to go that way. So paced himself nicely and uh, showed that he carried his power late as well. During the week, Diego teased that big fights being made for, for next year. Certain Edgar Belanga was tweeting during the fight. Is that a, a realistic possibility? I think Edgar Belanga against Diego Pacheco is a massive fight in 2024. You know, of course, Edgar wants the big names, if you like, you know, the Munguias and obviously the Canelo Alvarez's. But if Diego keeps winning, you know, he's going to put himself right in contention. He's number three with the WBO. I think he's top 10 with every governing body. You know, when you're looking for opponents, why not? Why not Diego Pacheco? So, you know, he needs a big name next. We had, as I said, a nice crowd in here. This is going to continue to grow in Los Angeles. He's a very, very popular young man from South Central. And after that performance tonight, you're going to see the crowds continue to grow. And we're going to do a big building job on him in 2024 to put him in a position to fight for the World Championship in 2025. That's the plan. Yeah, talk to us about the world titles. Are they likely to fragment over the next sort of six to 12 months, do you think? Yeah, obviously Canelo has them all at the moment. But, you know, in time, either when he retires or, or moves or doesn't fight mandatory, his belts are going to free up. And Diego's so well positioned across the governing bodies to challenge for him, as I said, particularly with the WBO. So he's in a great position. We're not in a tearing rush with Diego Pacheco. I think the matchmaking, as you said, was perfect tonight. Now we need a step up from Caceres. But there aren't many steps. There's probably one, two more steps before you get to the world champions. And I think that will work perfectly for us timing-wise. Let's just uh, have a quick word across the card. Christic Balzadua, impressive performance to move 3-0 tonight. Yeah, really good performance. You know, great support again as well. A, a very tough opponent in Pedro Cruz, um, who was the perfect opponent and a good stoppage in the last round. I thought it was a great performance. Jalen Walker, you know, good performance from him as well. He's had a long time out. He had a tough opponent tonight. He had great support in here tonight as well. Um, and then when you go to the TV card, Mark Castro, all action again. You know, the opponent was really tough, was always trading with him. First 10 round fight for Mark Castro. Looking forward to seeing him fight for championships in 2024. Cal Yafai, you know, a, a devastating defeat really in, in the first round. And, you know, I didn't know that he was actually decided that was going to be his last fight tonight. And you know, maybe he saw something in the gym that would suggest that he just doesn't have the punch resistance anymore. Or, you know, he had a long break, but I think it's time. It's the right time for him to step down from the sport. Massive win for Jonathan Rodriguez. And then Erica Cruz against Maylene Rivas. You know, I, I thought the scorecards were very wide. I thought it was a very close fight. You know, could have gone either way. The, the cleaner stuff was there with Maylene Rivas. But the pressure was there from Erica Cruz. And, you know, you have to understand, you can't just move around the ring and, and, and pot shot. You've got to land in volume as well when you're in with a volume puncher who's pushing you back. You know, my gut feeling was Rivas probably won the fight when the bell went, but it could have gone either way. I thought the cards were, were wide, but congratulations to Erica Cruz. She becomes a two division world champion. And obviously our focus now moves on to Ellie Scottney getting that unification against Erica Cruz. Elsewhere in the boxing world tonight, that has interest with matchroom fighters. I think Nathaniel Collins defended his British and Commonwealth titles. Hopey Price, mandatory challenger. Is that a fight that can happen next year? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like that was a tough fight for Nathaniel Collins, who is very highly rated. 
But Hopi Price has come through. He's got himself in a mandatory position. He's got a style that will cause anybody problems. And, you know, I'm looking forward to him fighting Nathaniel Collins next year. And Emma Cozen beat Hannah Ranking for two world titles. Terry Harper was very quick to, to tweet. Is that a fight you'd be interested in making next year? Yeah, you know, we want big fights for Terry Harper. If we can force some unifications, that would be fantastic. And this time next week, back in Dublin, just set the scene for us to close. Yeah, it's a massive card in Dublin next week. I mean, obviously, Chantel Cameron will, will rematch Katie Taylor. It's absolute must-win for Katie Taylor. Chantel Cameron is full of confidence. You know, we've got literally a handful of tickets left. We'll be sold out in the next 48 hours for that. The atmosphere is going to be incredible in Dublin. Massive fight for Gary Culley, you know, potentially career-defining against Britain's Re Reese Mould as well. You know, Thomas Carty in a big heavyweight fight as well. I love the fight with Paddy Donovan um, against Danny Boyle. I think it's a really tough fight for him. Big fight for the career of Sky Nicholson as well and some great All-Irish action on the cards. Elfa Barrett returning as well. It's a massive night in Dublin and uh, on the plane tomorrow and uh, two weeks back closer to home, Dublin and then Belfast before we head to the States for San Francisco, Devin Haney Progre and of course Sonny Edwards against Bam Rodriguez and then now off to Saudi on December 23rd. All live on the zone. Eddie, thanks for your time.